reality. We understand that. But you know that people are gaming the system. They're bringing pigs on planes, turkeys, snakes. Would you believe this? Actually, they're not allowed to bring a snake on. They're banned from bringing a snake on Delta. The uh, Delta prohibits farm poultry. It allows domestic birds and the turkey. Apparently, the turkey is considered a domestic bird. They gave it a seat. They gave it a seat. Maybe we could send it to the White House. It couldn't do a worse job than the president if we put a turkey in the Oval Office. All right, thanks. We're having fun. I know people don't want to listen anymore. Tonight, another debate. I feel like I'm living in the ex-Soviet Union with these staged debates. Why are the Republicans agreeing to all these debates and Hillary gets away with virtual murder? No, no debates, nothing. Her and that old man, Bernie Sanders, spitting on himself. That's it. That's a debate to her. Bernie the Spritzer looks like Larry David's grandfather. Gets up there and does nothing except to make her look like she's not crazier than him. Where are the, all the debates for the Democrats? They had one person who could have been a president who I might have considered to, a great guy, former Navy secretary, by the way. And they threw him off the uh, the platform. Why they get rid of him so fast? I forgot his name, and I shouldn't. What was his name, Robert? Two people on the other. They know. Two, two minutes. Think qu quickly. Two guys on the end down. One in Oregon, one here. Nobody knows the, the guy's name. I give I give people hard questions. Like, who was the third candidate on the Democrat ticket who was a legitimate patriot, former Navy secretary? Quinn? What's his name, Quinn? Jim Webb. I heard Quinn. That's Jim Webb now. All right, that was quick. There was like 20 questions. Jim Webb, former Navy secretary, veteran. The guy was a legitimate candidate, but he's no longer being in the debates because Hillary couldn't stand the real candidate. So we have like a Soviet system now. Another Republican debate tonight. I ha you're going to watch this? With the, the Bartolomo, the, the, the bowling pin is going to give another set of questions and, and make an embarrassment of CNBC. And the dumbest man in the history of the media, Neil Cavuto, is going to be there asking questions. I mean, Neil looks like a nice guy. In my day, the most, maybe, a pizzeria. Maybe the top. If the family had money, they would have bought him a pizzeria in, 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 in Bushwick. And maybe he could have kept it together for a few years. Probably would have had a breakdown from trying to manage the books. All right, but the point is, that's going to ask questions tonight, the two of them? Bartolo Bomo. Why can't you change your name to something that I can pronounce? Maria Bartol. Bart, Bart, Maria Bartol. Bartol. Anyway, I'm not going to watch this debate. It's going to be on after my show anyway. i got better things to do. You know what I'm doing? Today? I want to hear what I'm doing just for fun because you're bored already. I can feel it in, the, in my DNA. If you don't have... A seventh sense in radio, you're not going to last too long. I can sense you're ready to turn the dial. You're ready to flip. You feel I'm running out of steam. I'm bored of the top. I am. I'm so bored of the topics, I want to start breaking things in the studio. I don't care about service animal abuse. I don't care about the Navy situation right now. What I'm going to do after the show is very interesting. I'll tell you the minute I come back on the Savage Nation. Eddie, my love. Eddie. Eddie's already six feet under. You'll never know. Turn it off. I don't know. All this stuff of the 50s is dead to me. America, that part of America is dead. It's over. I don't, I'm going to change all the music. I think I'm only going to play. Anyway, I was going to tell you what I'm going to do after the show because to me it's interesting. And there's a golden rule in talk radio which I learned in the beginning. I never forgot. If it's of interest to the host, the audience will be interested in it. If you're just faking it and just going through the motions, Democrat, Republican, this, and the debate, the mat, the do, they're going to turn it off. So that, that's what I think. What I'm interested in is this. I have a friend who I romanticized in three novels. His name is Doc. I hope he's not listening. I hope he's working because he get embarrassed. He has fought in five wars, going back to Vietnam all the way up to the Golden Triangle. I'm sorry, to the Sunni Triangle in, uh, in, in Iraq. And his last assignment was as a medic on a five-man sniper team in the goal, in the in the in the, in the, uh, in the Sunni Triangle. And he and I hang out. He's a musician, practicing psychiatrist, and the man's fought in five wars. So I've been kind of telling my publisher about him because I've seen his pictures. Skinny kid, 
in in Vietnam, you know, with the buddies, the whole story, all the way up to Iraq, up to the guy I know who's a great musician, an all around wonderful guy. I mean, we speak to each other sometimes. You know, m midnight, I give him a call, and we go on and on about life. It's a strange relationship, him and I, but it's a very interesting one. We come from totally different backgrounds, but we, we kind of like each other. He came from a hippie background in Bolinas, California. It's as hippie as you can get. And yet he's became a warrior, and they asked him, why did you become a warrior? He says, because I have a lot of I, German in me. He said, I guess I have a lot of fighting spirit. And he became a paratrooper in it. This and that. So I'm trying to get my publisher interested in, in his book. And he's coming over to my house after the show, a couple hours after the show. We're going to do a little three-minute video of me sitting in an armchair. I think I'll post it, actually. And it's going to be filmed from behind my right shoulder like I am just the interviewer. No one's going to see me. They're only going to hear me. And I say, Doc, tell us about your experience in Fallujah when you were a medic with the five-man sniper team. One minute. Tell us about your experience in Vietnam, 30 seconds. Tell us how you went from being a hippie kid in Marin County, California, to a warrior. Tell me what you see going on in American politics today and why this book is of any relevance. Then he's got pictures, war pictures, of the most mangled, charred bodies you've ever seen in the world. Now, not everyone's interested in that. It's kind of considered like gauche to look at them. But when you see the highway of death with the charred bodies and how we once fought against the enemy compared to this charlatan in the white house you'll understand why i think this book is worthy of publication that's what i'm going to do after the show and then we're going to go have dinner join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 I'm going to break all these records, the taking them out of the repertoire. I mean, I'm sick of them. I need heavy metal. You know, I live in an area that is so frightening in some ways. It's the most beautiful place on earth. I live near the water. I love to watch the birds. They're congregating now. It's about to rain. You can feel it in the air. And the fish are coming to the surface. I see the, all of the birds feeding. There's one lone seal that comes down off my house. Poor thing. They don't have any mates or anything. There's no dating service for a seal. He always sticks his head up and looks at me from the like I'm supposed to throw him a fish. I don't know. He's looking to talk or something. He's lonely. Probably wants to come in and have a coffee with me. He's miserable in that water all night long, freezing. No blankets, pillows, nothing. No greenies. But you look at the newspaper. It is shocking that an area with allegedly intelligent people would not have a single newspaper of any value whatsoever. Here's the headlines. Mark Zuckerberg's neighbors miffed by security team. 49ers hire Chip Kelly as next head coach. I don't know who he is. Four Powerball tickets worth $638,000 each sold in NorCal. Um, stupid. I never saw anything like this. There's no news. Nothing about the corruption of the Democrat machine. Bicyclist. I was pepper sprayed by driver who nearly hit me. Oh, don't get me started on the bicyclists in the San Francisco area. Here's a hot story that's really threatening. This is one for Obama. Maybe he can send in a strike team. Disease prompts federal salamander ban. Pizza restaurant's bathroom sign gets national attention. I couldn't make titles like this up. It's like insanity. No, no news. No news at all. Nothing about the corruption or the embarrassment of what happened in the Persian Gulf, nothing here. Casino buses disrupting the Sunset District. Where do they get the time and the money, all these people, to take these poor old Chinese people to go throw their money away gambling? I see them on these buses. Riders board a casino bus outside of a home on 36th Avenue in Noriega. These poor people work all their life and throw their money away in these stupid casinos? Casino-going litter bugs are causing a headache. As residents say, the bus is contracted to pick up visitors, blah, 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 for local casinos. What's this with casinos? Casinos. Casinos. What do they do there? I don't even go to a casino. Does anyone go to a casino for any reason? Who would go to one of these places? Poor people go. They think they're going to hit it big. It's like the racetrack is for losers. Ask any gambler, they'll tell you you can't win. Losers go. It's like play the lotto. Who's going to play the lotto but a loser? Security sham, phony bar camps, uh, 
KCBS radio veteran dies. Oh, that's sad. Did I did I outlive another one? Let me see this. How old was he? I always look to see if I'm older than them. I want to see the age. He is mourning news anchor for 20 years. Oh, 88. All right. Died peacefully. God rest his soul. <laughs> Casey wasn't born to die Thursday when care for Silly Alamo. Oh, care for Silly. I'm never going. Never. Never. No, no I'm not going to go to ever. I never, if I get to say, anyway, knock that, knock. Don't know who I am, what I'm doing. I'm leaving a note. I'm not going to a care facility later on. Shut up, Teddy. You'll get fired if you do it again. Everyone thinks they're going to live to a ripe old age, that they're full of, you know, strength and vinegar. This, do this dog's getting senile. He's getting old and senile. He doesn't even listen anymore. I hope he doesn't start biting me. You know, they get old, they get senile dogs. They start biting the master. You have to put a muzzle on him. He's liable to die on me. Stop it. I'm on a radio. You know that. You grew up as a radio dog. But everyone thinks they're going to live forever, right? That they're, it's not going to happen to them. They're not going to be like their father or grandfather. And what you wind up is in a wheelchair next to a curtain abandoned by your family for hours at a time. And the illegal aliens who are hired as the, the attendants in the dirty uniforms, they basically abuse you, humiliate you, take the small change and small bills that your family may leave you for the, for the soda machine. That's how you end up. It's horrible. Just staring at a curtain, unmoving. It's, it's, oh, it's, oh, you know, the whole thing is like, what was I going to say? Not overestimated. It's, like, it's oversold old age. I think old age is oversold. Anyone out there who's old and glad to be old? I don't know. Anyone out there over like 90? What's the point of it? What's the point of it? You can't do anything. You don't know who you are. You don't remember anything. You don't know who your family is. It's horrible. That's why a lot of people decide to go out younger. Why am I? I mean, I'm, I'm serious. Now, my father used to say that to me, and he died young. He said, I'll never be disabled. I don't want to lose control of my life. And that's the way it was for those guys in those generations. They didn't want to ever be powerless. I'll take some callers now. All right, this is a killer call, I swear to God. I'm not making this caller up. Line two, Mr. Webb on VNN Radio. Webb, what's on your mind? Well, you're talking about comfort animals. At my college, we had someone a couple of years ago to show up with a comfort rooster. <laughs> documentation from some that is what is a comfort rooster what does it do to comfort the individual I have a picture I could even send you she's uh, just holding the rooster I guess it comes okay let, let's go the other way give a description of the woman who needed a comfort rooster well she was uh, sort of a needy looking lady uh, to say the least a younger woman actually and um, but what did the rooster do to give her comfort Okay, I look, I, this is a family show because what's running through my mind is not palatable for a family show. I mean, there's another word for a rooster that I can't use on the air. Right. But I wouldn't have believed it had I not seen it, Michael. It was one of the most... Bizarre. Or she sat in the classroom with a comfort rooster? They didn't let her. They didn't let her bring the animal. Did uh, she sue the university and, and say that she was heartbroken because she couldn't bring in her comfort rooster? She didn't sue us, but uh, she was not too happy. They just refused the request. Well, she ought to go to work for uh, Obama's EEOC. She's perfect. She could be in charge of the Comfort Animal Brigade. Okay. Thought you would like that. All right. Well, that, that tops. You win the prize. You're getting a free copy of Government Zero. Comfort Rooster. Top of the line. Anyone else have a crazy story about a comfort animal? The abuse of this? Because it started with the turkey story. Someone brought a turkey and Delta had to fly the turkey and give the turkey a seat. You know, I, um, what's this? Oh, an older person's, call. don't get mad at me now. Come on and say I'm attacking the old. I know what's coming now. That's the next thing. The, the, all, the There'll be some senior brigades screaming at me with false teeth outside the studio soon, teeth chattering with canes that I attacked the agent. I didn't do that. I'm not exactly 14 years old. I'm just asking the, the philosophical question. Who really wants to live into the, to that age? Take a look at that guy in L.A., the one who runs CBS or owns all that, well, forget his name, Redstone, Redstone. He's 90-something years old, allegedly still has three women around him, has sex with them. How at 93? What is he taking? What is he eating? I mean, does he eat the, the, the flesh of a comfort rooster at night? I don't understand that one. How do you cook a comfort rooster after you threw it at comfort? <laughs> 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 Very tough meat. 
Tough. I don't know. You want to? Live? Yeah, you know, I know guys when I was younger, they'd say to me, they don't want to live past the age of 50. No, when we were kids, I told you, guys would say, hey, you know, he said to me, I, 